In a previous video, I created this beautiful blue-green flame by igniting a mixture of methanol and borax. Unfortunately though, the flame got a bit out of hand and I wasn't able to put it out in time. That's why I'm not filming in my room anymore. Last time, I had reason that since humans breathe out carbon dioxide, I could use my breath to extinguish fires. That clearly didn't work. So for future experiments, I wanted to have the necessary precautions in place in case a fire like this happened again. So I figured I would try to make a fire extinguisher using chemistry. To do this, all I needed was a beaker, some baking soda, and some vinegar. I didn't have any vinegar, so I used some hydrochloric acid instead. The way this works is actually pretty simple. I react baking soda with hydrochloric acid and it produces CO2, which I can then pour over a fire to put it out. Baking soda is actually sodium bicarbonate, which reacts with acids to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a pretty unstable compound in aqueous solution, so it'll quickly decompose into water and gaseous carbon dioxide, which escapes the solution. This is also why carbonated drinks fizz. It's the carbonic acid in them decomposing and producing CO2. So let's test it out. Here's our HCl, which I've diluted a little bit, and we're gonna use it to put out this candle. So all we have to do is take our HCl and dump in a little bit of baking soda. Just like that, watch it fizz. We can pour this, bang, it's gone in an instant. So since it worked for a candle, let's try this again with a colored flame. Here, I've got a mixture of ethanol and borax in a watch glass here, and I'm gonna light it on fire. You can see it makes this nice blue flame. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing I did for all of the other runs. Here we've got our hydrochloric acid, and I'll take a good amount of baking soda, dump it in there. Oh, seems like the flame turned more Seems like it turned more orange. The reason the flame turned orange when I poured carbon dioxide over it was that the carbon dioxide cooled the flame. This happened because the carbon dioxide displaced the oxygen that was causing the combustion reaction. Even though the reaction kept going, it wasn't going at its maximum speed or temperature, which is why the flame turned orange. Generally, blue flames are hotter and run at higher temperatures than orange flames, and that's why you see a color change here. Let's see if we can get that effect again. Still blue at the base. There it is. It's orange, oh, and it got put out. Just like that. Let's see if we can run this flame up again. Yep, there's still something there. Pour it over and it's out. Ah, looks like we're all done. But yeah, it worked. Not really for big flames, but for small ones at least, definitely did work. The reason that I can just tilt the beaker to pour the gas out is that carbon dioxide is much denser than air. CO2 is a much heavier molecule, so in the same way that dense objects sink to the bottom of a lake or a pool of water, the CO2 will sink to the bottom of the mixture of gases in the air, and so I can just pour it out of the beaker by tilting the beaker over the fire. Once the CO2 is exposed to the fire, the fire doesn't have any source of oxygen left, so it goes out. Mm -hmm. 